You could fuck your mother in front of the governor and not go to jail. Principle of the overall. I have an idea. If he has a turn, I get it. This is easy. What is this? Something like that. I assume you don't go off and tell these conversations. Anyway. No, no, no. Because this is. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So. No. However. Other people can make things happen that you don't need to know about. We talk about lots of things that we don't talk about. You know what? We've been busting people in to deal with that fucking asshole for 50 years, and we're not going to stop now. This is part two of our undercover investigation into the dark, backroom dealings of the Hillary Clinton campaign. Part one blew up on social media, with many Americans wondering why the mainstream media wasn't covering the story. In fact, Project Veritas Action had television exclusives lined up around the country. Those television stations spiked the story at the last minute. Our sources tell us the reason they did so was fear of retaliation and retribution from a future Hillary Clinton administration. Truth is dangerous, especially when it challenges those in power. In this video, Democratic operatives tell us how to successfully commit voter fraud on a massive scale. A lot of free union guys, they'll do whatever oh, yeah. you want. Yeah. They're rock and roll. So I'm basically deputy rapid response director for the DNC for all things Trump oh. on the ground. Nobody's really supposed to know about me. <laughs> no, I'm saying, we have mentally ill people mm. that we pay to do shit. Make no mistake. This guy named Cesar Vargas is his name. I got a priest to cry on camera once. You know, Brad, Bob, and Lux, and myself are all part of the old school method where it doesn't matter what the freaking legal and ethics people say. We need to win this motherfucker. Um, so, Bob is really good friends with him, mm -hmm. and talked to him this afternoon. And they are all in. If we can get 25 grand, they're all in. Our investigators wanted to find out what it would take to get the highest favorable turnout. Democratic politico Scott Fovel was our target, and he was more than willing to lead us through the process of how to rig an election. We did spam when we were in charge, too. So what did we do? We did the exact same thing. Only we, we manipulated the vote with money and action, not with laws. It's a very easy thing for Republicans to say, well, they're busting people in. Well, you know what? We've been busting people in to deal with that fucking asshole for 50 years, and we're not going to stop now. We're just going to find a different way to do it. So, I mean, I grew up with that idea. You know, they they used to bust people out to Iowa. If we needed people out there, we used to bust people out to Iowa. When we met Scott Fovel, he worked for People for the American Way an organization funded in large part by George Soros. He now works for Americans United for Change. It's a nonprofit that claims to, quote, move America in a new, better direction, unquote. With guys like Fova working for them, we wonder what direction that might be. When I do this, I, I think you're an investigator first. Good, yeah, work backwards, yes. Yeah, that's I used, great. I used to do the investigation. Yeah. Different method. I think backwards from how they would prosecute if they yeah. could. And then try to build out the method to avoid that. The plan that was discussed was how to bring people from one state into another state to vote illegally. They could invalidate. Well, okay, let's just say, in theory, if, an, if a major investigation came up of major vote fraud that way, how would they prove it and who would they charge? Are they going to charge each individual? Oh, sorry. Are they going to charge each individual with voter fraud? See, that's, or what, they, that's they, what I'm going to go after the facilitator for conspiracy, which they can prove. And it's one thing if all these people drive up in their personal car. There's a bus involved. Uh, that changes the dynamic. So it's the legality. Uh, well, yeah. Because you can prove conspiracy if there's a bus. Yeah. If there are cars, it's much harder to prove. And there's enough money. If there's enough money, then you have people drive their POV. Absolutely. Or you have them drive runs. Yeah, with with Mil with Wisconsin license plates. Absolutely. Well, you can't have them with Wisconsin license plates because rentals here, 
most of them don't have Wisconsin license. Wow. But there's this thing called the used car auction. Ah. Ah. Used car auction. The titles belong to some unknown company. Their company car. And you know, these are multiple employers. These are not all one so employer. Use shell. Yeah. You use shell companies. Yeah. The cars come from one company, the same cars come from another. There's no bus involved, so you can't prove that it's on mass. There you go. So it doesn't tip people off. There you go. That's what I'm saying. See, okay, yeah. So now I'm starting to see that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When I do this, I, I think you're an investigator first. Good. Yeah. Work backwards. Yes. Yeah, that's I used great. To, I used to do the investigation. Yeah. A different method. I think backwards from how they would prosecute if they yeah. could. And then try to build out the method to avoid that. So, okay, so you're saying shell companies, you're saying um, the car, uh, if the car rental. has a Wisconsin license and is owned by a third entity, then it's much harder to prove that these people drove in from out of state, there's no bus involved, so you can't prove and they would have to be looking for them in the first place. Oh, a bus is something that you're not, yeah. that you're not looking for. Or exactly. That you are looking for. Yeah. A car. Our journalist helped brainstorm with Fovel on how to come up with addresses for their phony voters. Now, if we just have the canvassers logging the homes, they don't even have to. They don't even have to know they have why to they're doing. Put a mark on it and say this address. You know, yeah, we we have you, moved, but moves could mean someone else moved and then in. You take that data and you flip it out and you give it to people and you have people download it. That's brilliant. I love it. So yeah, and and you know, it sort of depends upon how you know how much the canvassers don't have to know why they they just need to be no. told to do. Yeah. In fact, you don't want them to. Know. Right. The question is whether when you get caught by a reporter, does that matter? Because does it turn into an investigation or not? In this case, in this state, the answer is no. Because they don't have any power to do anything. Right. So so this is sort of maybe maybe not stuff for the general, but stuff to maybe hold no, off until until No, I think you could do it for the general. Yeah, okay. So, what you do is you implement the plan on a much bigger scale. Uh -huh. You implement a massive change in state legislatures and in Congress. Uh -huh. So you aim higher for your goals, and then you implement it across every Republican health state. So starting on the grassroots, um, that's honestly the ripest environment to do it in, too, within, within striking distance. Michigan, Indiana, the least restrictive donation caps and, and campaign finance laws and investigations and, and investigative arms and any of that. Like, they have weakened it so bad in these three states. You could fuck your mother in front of the governor and not go to jail. If you had enough money to go like this. Fovel then told our journalist that he knew the guy that makes stuff like this happen. So Bob Kramer uh -huh. comes up with a lot of these ideas. Uh -huh. I work with Bob Kramer one to one all the time. I'm the white hat. Democracy partners is kind of the dark hat. Um, I will probably end up being a partner there at some point uh -huh. because we, our philosophy on this is actually the same. Bob Kramer founded Democracy Partners in 2011. He is the husband of Jan Schakowsky, a Democratic congresswoman from Chicago, and in 2005 he pled guilty on tax violations and bank fraud. He was convicted and sentenced to five months in prison and 11 months of house arrest. One of the things that Steve uh, was talking to Scott about he passed on to me, and I think it's one of the reasons why I got in touch with you, he envisioned, you know, what do you need to be able to vote in some of these new voter, what do you really need, right. okay? what makes you a citizen. And if you look at that checklist, it's an ID card of any kind that shows you who you are, right. 
and a pay stub that shows you're getting paid at a local address someplace. I mean, to, uh, you mean a, uh, to get registered. Yeah, yeah, to get registered. Yeah. So you go in and register. If you have those two things, you're registered to vote. Yeah. So if you, let's say I had a business inside of, say, Illinois or Michigan, and I hired people, and I had addresses for them, I could write them checks for those. I could use them as day laborers or whatever and use them and find my way around the, the, um, voter, ID, the uh, voter registration laws for, for Hispanics. Um, that's one thing. I'm, I'm actually, that idea, when he gave it to me, I was like, that sounds like something. We could register huge numbers of people that way. Well, that kind of thing kind of stuck in my craw when he mentioned it to me. All right, let me, um, on that front, I'm going to write down these options. Let me see if I can uh, chat with the people who are most involved in Hispanic voter registration. Okay. And, um, uh, uh, and see what their thoughts are. I mean, there are a couple of different organizations that are... That's your big trick. Okay, yeah, if you know folks that you can put me in touch with, oh, like, no, what I, if I, you know... We'll if, help you do this. I mean, this is very important, this stuff. Turnout is huge, huge, huge. Because Bob Kramer is diabolical. And I love him for it. Yeah. I've learned so much from that man over the last 20 years, I can't even tell you. And he calls me to be his firefighter mm -hmm. a lot of the time. Yeah. Because there are people who, in our movement, who will not do what it takes to get shit done. And I am not that person. I'm the one they send when everything has gone to shit. So, he, he spends a lot of time on the phone with my boss, actually. Like, asking for me to go places that I don't go. We had our donor set up a second meeting with Bob Creamer to see how he could help put this voter fraud plan into motion. This is re-enfranchising voters. That's how I look at it, okay? If I could, through my company, employ these people for a day, okay, or for a week, or for a month, okay, and I could find work for them, useful work for them, and issue corporate IDs for them. Here's my beer. I'm going to run this by our work. Okay. My fear is that someone would decide that this was a big vote for us. Creamer hesitated to help our donor pull off the voter fraud scheme that Fovel created. Bob came back to me mm -hmm. and asked me, what is he talking about? Mm -hmm. I told him what we were talking about. But you then, and he said, well, I'm not going to touch that with a 10-foot pole now. Right. I go, or should you? Good he advice. Goes, Nor should you. Okay. He goes, good, I'm glad we're on the same page there. I said, however, other people can make things happen that you don't need to know about. He goes, so that's, he got that's, where, that's where I think this goes. Yep. But you not, understand, he's still going to have to know about it. Um, oh, yeah. Mr. Kramer? Yes. Well, I mean, is that okay as long as it's outside of, okay. Now, we talk about lots of things that we don't talk about. Fovel told us about a guy in New York that works with Creamer a lot. We wondered if he was the guy who could pull off the voter fraud scheme. This guy named Cesar Vargas is his name. Um, so Bob is really good friends with him mm -hmm. and talked to him this afternoon. Vargas is an interesting character. He is the co-founder of the Dream Action Coalition, a New York lawyer and a dreamer himself. Born in Mexico, Vargas is an undocumented alien.
right? I know that. I mean, that so I think it's a matter about for us. Let's see who the next president is. is you know, if it if it is Donald Trump, then it even, it even makes more sense. The issue would be even more credible and much more opportunity for us to jump into this. Right. If the Secretary Clinton and the Foreign ID laws are loosened and we have much more opportunity for the people to vote mm -hmm. and we have immigration reform, it's not going to be as significant, right? Off the bridge, you know, can I go and help us do that? Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, count me in. You don't go off and tell these conversations. Anyway. No, no, no. Because no. this is no, absolutely, absolutely. As an activist, do we want to do this? Do we want to take a chance? Let's, let's talk about it. We have to do a better job of making our people do what they're supposed to do. Not, not asking them. Yeah. Not yeah. expecting them and taking them for granted, but beating the shit out of them and making them like, like, like voters. Yeah. America, our series of videos from this investigation will continue up until the election. People ask me, James, what can I do? Here's what you can do. Send this video to every single person you know. Demand the mainstream media play these tapes. Email the journalists. Tweet at the journalists. And remember, the truth is dangerous, especially when it challenges those in power.